we want to solve the quadratic inequality x squared minus x minus 12 less than or equal to zero. To solve this means to find all the values of x that would satisfy this inequality. We'll first solve this by hand and then we'll also show how you can solve this graphically. To solve this, we first want to determine the x values for which x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to zero. So even though we have an inequality here, we're first going to solve the equation x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. Well, this is factorable. The factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of negative 12 that add to negative one are negative four and positive three. So x minus four is equal to zero when x equals four. And x plus three is equal to zero when x equals negative three. Now going back up to the inequality for a moment, these two values are when x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to zero. And because the inequality symbol is less than or equal, these two values are part of the solution, but there are many more solutions we need to find. So what we'll do now is use these two values to form intervals on the number line and test to see which intervals satisfy the original inequality. So we'll sketch our number line. We'll plot negative three and positive four. Again, because of the less than or equal inequality, these two values are part of the solution. So we'll plot closed points on positive four and negative three. If the symbol was just less than, these two values would not be part of the solution and therefore we'd make open points on these two values. Notice how we've now formed three intervals on the number line. We have the interval on the left, the interval on the middle, and the interval on the right. And for perspective, let's go ahead and put a zero here. Now we're gonna find a test value in each interval and test to see if it satisfies the original inequality. If the test value satisfies the inequality, then the entire interval is part of the solution. If the test value does not satisfy the inequality, the entire interval is not part of the solution. So for our test values, we can't use the points that we just plotted. So to the left of negative three, let's use negative four. In the middle, let's go ahead and use zero. And to the right, let's use five. So let's go ahead and test these in our inequality. We'll first test x equals negative four. Well, when x is negative four, we would have negative four squared minus negative four minus 12 less than or equal to zero. So right now this is a question, we're not sure. This will be positive 16 plus four, that'll be 20 minus 12, that's eight. So we have eight less than or equal to zero. Well, eight is not less than or equal to zero, so this is false. So the entire interval to the left of negative three is false. And now we go to the next test value. Let's test x equals zero. Well, if x is zero, we're just gonna have zero minus zero minus 12, or negative 12 less than or equal to zero. This is true, which means the entire interval from negative three to positive four is true. Let's go ahead and graph this interval from negative three to positive four, including the endpoints. And now we'll test x equals five. So we would have five squared minus five minus 12 less than or equal to zero. 25 minus five is 20, 20 minus 12 is eight. Eight is not less than or equal to zero. So the interval to the right of four is false. So the closed interval from negative three to positive four is the solution to this inequality, which means any value in this interval would satisfy this inequality. Let's go ahead and state the solution a couple other ways. Again, here's the graph of our solution. Using interval notation, we'd have the closed interval from negative three to positive four, or we could also say x is greater than or equal to negative three and less than or equal to positive four. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we can actually solve this quadratic inequality very quickly by graphing the function f of x equals x squared minus x minus 12. So here's the graph of f of x equals x squared minus x minus 12, or if you want, just y equals x squared minus x minus 12. Since we want to know when x squared minus x minus 12 is less than or equal to zero, that's going to occur when the function 
is less than or equal to zero. And remember, function values refer to y values, so when the y values are less than or equal to zero, the function is on or below the x-axis, which would be this piece of the graph here. And notice this occurs along the x-axis from negative three to positive four, and this interval is the solution to our quadratic inequality. So while the process for solving these by hand is pretty involved, solving them graphically is very straightforward. We'll take a look at another example in the next video.